All right. So Mark's going to be talking to us about, uh, well, the presentation's title, Let Me Help You, Don't Fear the Man with the Free T-Shirts. Uh, ironically enough, he does not have any T-Shirts with him. So uh, you, can be, you can beat him up at the end. Yes. But I have clothed half the audience probably at some point in time. So, um, All right, my name's Mark. Uh, I work at Citrix. Um, I work in their open source business office. Um, I work on Apache CloudStack. I'm a committer for Apache CloudStack. I uh, work with Open Daylight, which is their SDN, the Linux Foundation's SDN controller, uh, Zen Project. I'm on the advisory board there, um, as well as Zen Server, which is pseudo open source. Um, it's open source licensed, I should say. I spend a lot of time working with Linux Foundation and Apache Software Foundation, or Apache Software Foundation, trying to help out. So the real question is, what would you say do I do, I do here? Which is, uh, if you watched Office Space, I am the guy that takes the requirements from the customers to the engineers. Um, really and truly, that's sort of scary because that's sort of what I do and it's not nearly as condescending and mean as it was in Office Space, but um, some of the specific things I do is I spend a lot of time educating our company and our customers on open source. And how it works, because uh, unless you're a participant, it's really not that intuitive. Uh, I spend a lot of time doing developer relations, so I try and help people that work on Citrix products understand how they can contribute to, particularly Apache CloudStack, and what that means because they have a partnership with Citrix, and then we have the ASF, where as we all know, we participate as individuals. So it's a very confusing thing for a lot of companies. Luckily, it's not so confusing for other companies, like Hugo here from Schubert Phyllis is a company that really gets how it works. A ton of my time is spent doing awareness building and helping others within my team do awareness building for our projects. Um, a lot of people, uh, I thought it was interesting, Hugo gave a talk this morning on Apache CloudStack, which uh, when he asked how many people who were at ApacheCon knew about Apache's CloudStack, which was a top level project, it was a shocking few people knew that. So even within our own organization, not a ton of people understand all the, and it's hard because we have 140, 150 top level projects, a bunch incubating. It is a big organization, it's no longer just the, uh, software foundation, the uh, web server. But beyond that, people outside of Apache, it's really, um, we don't promote our projects. People that are smart talk to other people that are smart, and typically that's how some of our new technologies get adopted. Um, but I don't think we have the great brand awareness, so how many people here have heard Apache CloudStack before today? How many people heard about open, have heard about OpenStack? Okay. They sort of have a lot of overlap, and it's in every news media outlet on IT in the world right now, but not a lot of people know about CloudStack, which is a shame, because I think they're both fine projects. Um, I spend a lot of time recruiting users, and one of the things that, the reason I titled this talk is don't be afraid of the guy with free t-shirts, is I spend a lot of time at Linux Fests, at other conferences, talking about CloudStack, handing out t-shirts. Or more correctly, people that work for me, I hand out t-shirts, they actually educate people on how it works. Um, and I try and facilitate participation. So if people are interested in what we do, um, try and make it easier for them to um, participate, whether it's educating them on what the Apache way is or how you become a a uh, contributor or how you use the systems at Apache, I think it's all very important and not very intuitive for new users. <clears throat> and I give away a lot of t-shirts. So this is Chip Childers, he was the last VP of Apache CloudStack at, at the last Apache CloudStack collaboration conference and he is wearing our logo which is a monkey. <clears throat> So how many people here have heard the, uh, seen the movie Jerry Maguire? Okay. 
I spent a lot of time with open source guys trying to help them out. And if you remember the scene in the locker room where Jerry Maguire is on his knees saying, help me help you, that's how I feel a lot of days. I have resources at my disposal, and I can help them do things, but they look at me sort of like Cuba Gooding Jr. and sort of laugh and say, I don't know if I want any of what you're selling. And really what I'm selling is resources for you to do things better. How many people here are committers on Apache Project? I am not trying to um, <clears throat> gain influence or do anything else. I just want to make sure the projects that I'm interested in are successful. And I'd like as a whole the ASF to be successful. And I'm, when I talk at our executive board meetings and things like that about what we do, um, I try to explain it and finally I just make the joke. I'm like the CIA shuffling resources to the Santa Anista government. I'm just like, I have all this resource and I want these guys who are less funded to, to just maintain the balance of power. <clears throat> but a lot of times I think people are suspicious unless you tell them why you do what you do. So for me personally, I'm an open source guy. I work at Citrix, so I want them to be successful, but I'm very interested in open source at being successful because I believe in that. And as far as that goes, personally, if ASF is successful, it validates what I believe in. And so that's why I do what I do. And I want to be part of something cool. And very few times in life do you get to actually participate on something that drives a whole industry, sort of the way the Apache web server and Hadoop and Tomcat are really driving our industry. There's 450 active members, is that right? give or take, four, 450 active members that are partially the Apache Software Foundation that have as much influence as some of the biggest organizations on the planet, like Oracle and Microsoft, as far as driving the flow of information and really making the internet possible. And that's pretty cool, and I don't think we should take that lightly. <laughs> and this is actually pretty much in the order of priority. If we're successful, if the ASF is successful with their projects that we care about, my company can be successful, and that's what enables me to have a job. So that's sort of why I think these people that have similar jobs at these big companies do what they do. And they're here, really, really we do it not because we're trying to gain influence or do anything else. It's because we want to see these projects be successful. Our companies understand that. And basically, Software developers are sort of my kind of people. I liked science as a kid. I played d and I had a, you know, 386 before that, a 286. I loved bulletin boards and my 2600 baud, 2400 baud. Is 2600 2400 baud modem? 2400 baud modem. 300 baud modem, <laughs> yeah. I think I do, I, I love that. So here's what I want to talk about, is how I think open source works and how the guy with the free t-shirts can fill in some of those gaps. This is very scientific, my own little theory, I call it the power law of open source, and this is how I think projects work. And basically, once you have a, you have a bit of code, people build awareness, so that's through your website or Twitter or through mailing lists or whatever. People understand what you do and they come and get involved. On the high side, level of participation. Above all else, you have to be aware of the project before you can do anything else. Then you discuss it. The SF is great at discussion. I don't see how you guys keep up with mailing lists because we will discuss everything to the nth degree. The voting process, how many, I, I mean, you take a vote, you have a, a billion plus ones, zeros, minus ones. It's, it's a lot of discussion, but we have discussion. We're good at that. So I'm a top poster because after the 40th eighth like reply to the thread, I lose my mind and my scrolling finger, I like, get carpal tunnel. Joe, Joe does not appreciate my top posting tendencies. I usually apologize if I know Joe's gonna read my, my posts, but anyhow, then they download it or they check the source code out, they get the code, and then they use it. 
after we use it, we get feedback. And as this goes on and on, all the way down to people can extend that code. So they provide patches or they provide a plugin, et cetera. Level participation, level of effort. As it goes to the right, it's harder and fewer people participate. Finally, you get into this core development. That is a lot of coordination. The stuff on the left-hand side can happen discreetly. I can write a plug-in and I don't have to coordinate with the rest of the people. When it comes to core development, we have to coordinate what we're gonna do and how we're gonna check in that code and what the features are or else it's anarchy and it's hard. The stuff on the left they call collective intelligence. That's like why Facebook and Twitter and all this stuff is cool because we're all posting pictures of our food so if we wanna see what's good to eat in Denver, we just look for a hashtag Denver Good Eats and bam. Everybody that ever posted those tags, we can find it in Twitter search. Right-hand side, collaborative intelligence, hard to do. It doesn't matter if you're open source or proprietary. There's not a huge advantage when you're trying to coordinate software development at that higher level, other than the transparency. This is what I think Apache is good at, all the hard stuff, which is ironic. I mean, the software development project for Apache, its process for Apache is very, very good. It works. We have a good track record. What we don't do so well is the awareness, which leads me to the big question. If a developer drops code, no one knows, does it matter? There's something about a bear in the woods, but I didn't use that metaphor because I didn't think it was PG-13. But anyhow, that is really the thing I want to talk about today is we do all this stuff really well, but we're not great at building awareness. And if you can't build awareness, you don't get more development resources. You don't get more people coming to help um, vet the code. You don't get more people discussing it and supporting other users. You don't get more developers doing core development or extending it. And my, my thesis, or actually what I have know from the, my history doing open source is, is if you get a lot of awareness, you get more people developing your code. That is key. And I think in this case, if our goal is to develop software for the public good, more is better. And feel free to debate me. Like, like this is my impression. Before I worked at Citrix, I worked for a company called Cloud.com. We had open source the cloud stack before that. We had huge awareness. The domain didn't hurt, but we had a lot of people coming and downloading their stuff every month. We didn't have a lot of developer participation. That was something that changed when we went and donated the code to ASF. We got great developer. Um, participation, awareness dropped. Before that, I did another open source company called Xenos Monitoring. Huge awareness. Until we got huge awareness, we didn't start getting developers. Once we got a huge awareness, we got a good flow of plugins coming in because users were giving back. I think it's important, and it's my agenda, so you know where I'm coming from. So it doesn't matter. Here's another thing I think that you should consider. The ASF in general is, the, is very, very, has not built their brand over the years. Despite the fact that 92% of the internet run, or websites run Apache web servers, the vast majority of awareness has not, has not gone up. And this is Google Trends. You can search for AS, Apache Software Foundation from, 19, or from 2007 when they started it on. We're not building our brand. And it means a lot to me, I think it means a lot to developers, but it doesn't necessarily mean a lot to users. However, if you look at things like Hadoop, Hadoop is like, I, and I should have done the Google Trends for that, you will see that the awareness and, and the amount of chatter around Hadoop is huge, but I don't think people make the connection between Hadoop and Apache. And I think that's important because Hadoop success reflects well on Apache. And a rising tide raises all boats. So how many people, does anybody here work on a Hadoop or Hadoop related project? Okay. Any, so if Hadoop is doing well, it should help raise the status of other projects because part of the success of Hadoop has to do with the foundation and the way we develop software. It also has to do with the fact that it's awesome technology, solves a problem that nobody else has solved in commercial, commercial software, 
and they did it extremely well, extremely quickly. Well, I say extremely quickly, I just looked yesterday. Hadoop's been around for eight years. It doesn't seem like it's been that long, but um, last week, did you see how much money Cloudera raised? $718 million. $718 million. In the last month, there's been over a billion dollars of venture capital investment in Hadoop between just Hortonworks and Cloudera, because before that, they had put in 320 million between the two companies. That's some serious, serious money. And <clears throat> I know that there's a lot of people investing in it, but if they're successful, I would hope that people understand that it's a Hibachi Hadoop and not just Hadoop, because that's gonna help the, the status of our organization and hopefully help the status of other projects. So here's where I think, I, I think I've established, I think there's a hole. I think a lot of people that I've talked to were apathetic to the whether or not we promote our projects or not. They're like, I wrote the code, I wrote it for my own good, and that's great. Apathy sucks. If you write code for the public good, which is the mission of the ASF, you wanna make sure the public knows about it. And the reason you, you want the other people to use it is because then they can come and help you make it better, help you support your code, bring in features, testing, all those things. No one should be an island in software development. There's a great blueprint out there for the way we develop code. We all understand the Apache way when it re relates to software development. We have processes, we have mailing lists, we have source control, we have all these tools that are great for developing the software, we don't have a great mechanism or blueprint for us to promote that software. And I think if you don't, like I, the, I don't write code. I actually failed my first Hello World script back in college because I was hungover actually and I forgot the L and my prof said it's, it's a, you know, it, you get it right or you get it wrong. So every time I checked into a SMTP server and it's H-E-L-L, -L, it just spites me because I'm like, that guy messed it up and his stuff's been around for a while. But <clears throat> anyhow, I have other skills. I have people that have other skills that would love to help out. There's not a great way for them to do that without getting committer status if you don't help do something technical like help with docs or submit bugs or write code, it's hard for those people to get involved. And I think that that's one of our weaknesses. The other thing that just sort of chaps me is when people don't know about the cool, fast, better stuff that we have, but there's some other company, there's a company out there promoting their crappy proprietary software solution, everybody's using it, and then they come to our mailing list and say, hey, I've been using this, I wouldn't use any example because I don't want to offend any crappy proprietary projects, but I've been using this stuff and it sucks and I downloaded this, you know, I downloaded Cassandra and put my data in it and it works and there's all these tools for it and blah, 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 and my bugs get fixed in like a matter of weeks, you know. They're like, I wish I would have known about that. It's sort of, I think we could do something better there. Now, the question I would ask to you, does, does anybody disagree with what I'm saying? Like, I have a perspective, but I don't have to be right. I mean, is it good enough just to develop software and hope the cool kids find it? Oh. All right, that's cool. I, I mean, really, I, I've, I've heard a compelling argument recently where they're like, you know, it, it'll either succeed or fail. I was like, and if we don't waste any time worrying about that, maybe that's just our process. I'm like, thought about it, and it wasn't something I personally agreed with, but. I, I think it's like having a great band. There are undoubtedly fantastic bands out there that have terrible promotion that no one or very few people have heard of, or they have, you know, like that small, dedicated core presence. I, I, I agree in some point that marketing there has to be a plan. And so even for our development process, it's, the process isn't so much collaborative as it enables collaboration within the process. So if we have marketing that enables collaboration, if, if we launch a 
we launched Couch TV, right? Do you have a great way to tell all the people who are on Twitter to tweet out and point to the ASF blog that says Couch TV is out? Um, And maybe the template shouldn't be that we send it to a mailing list, that we spam the, the uh, IRC channel and says, hey, can everybody cut and paste this tweet in right now? Because that would be that kind of, like, what, we don't have a, a consistent process. And, some pe and I, I worry that as, and to your point about the, the vendors creating, the vendors create these brands in absence of a way to market it. Sometimes they want affinity, like in my case, I could care less if I had a Citrix Cloud Stack brand built. What I really care about is Cloud Stack. Is Apache Cloud Stack has a strong brand, but I don't have a great way to do that because I require. I mean, it's gotten better. The way the PMCs now can give permission to use brand has gotten better. And when before Shane, uh, Shane and Nick were good about events and trademarks, but it was not inconsequential to actually do that. Um, so that's, that's good points about CouchDB. So what can we learn from CouchDB and Apache Cloud Stack that we can give that, that template to all of the projects and give them some of the resources to do that um, so that we are consistent and we're using the best practice across everywhere. Plus, I would be happy to say, like, the other thing I would like to see is the people in Cloud Stack supporting CouchDB and vice versa, right? Like, I like ASF projects. I may not like, I may not use CouchDB for my particular use, but I want to be able to promote other projects and see them be successful because it's good for all of us. Daniel, you had your hand up. Yeah, yeah. I do think that that if the bigger the user base, the better, the bigger the contributor base is, and that's good for your project, because as much as it's, I think everybody loves the projects they work on, they could always use more help. All right. So we sort of talked about this a little bit, but from my standpoint, and I, I actually don't want to be, I'm not trying to say that ASF is doing it wrong, but these are some of the, the good for me and the bad for me. Consensus driven. I can't, no vendor can go in and sort of bully around everyone else. The other thing is, the bad is when it's consensus driven, if I need to try and get an answer for how I do something, it takes a vote by committee. So I can't just go to the man or woman who's in charge of that and say, hey, this is, this is what, what can I do here? I usually have to wait for a vote, a mailing list, which Ironically, is usually private, so I don't know if they discuss, are discussing it or if I've just, like, ah, we're too busy. I think we do excellent development process. Like, I work for a proprietary software company. Not that we don't do build software well, but I think the effectiveness of the way um, Apache projects work is very, very good. We don't have a great promotion process, as we I'm not going to beat that horse anymore. I think it's ironic that we have such a good web server that runs half the internet or most of the internet, but our websites are not the, the best. There's just a certain irony there. Um, we use a, a content management system that is less than optimal to develop modern websites. Um, we have so much data on our website because we've, we're actually getting heavy under our own weight. Like, how many projects have we accepted each year? And so on and so on, but our infrastructure I think is creaking under that burden. And um, personal like story, after Citrix donated the, the uh, um, code to the ASF, every week for like three weeks afterwards, when we go to the Apache.org, the website would not be responding, which is just not, not the best case. I haven't had that problem since in almost a year now, but it was, it's very, um, it goes through spurts. I love the fact we have 
passionate vocal developers. Um, our users, we don't have a way to uh, really get in touch with our users, and I think that's important. Like, the whole idea of interaction between people that have some similar problems, we are so mailing list focused, and I know it doesn't exist if it doesn't in the mailing list, but sometimes it would be nice to know that XYZ user works for a service provider in Belgium, and there's another guy is working for a service provider in California, and they could talk to each other and say, hey, I have the same kind of problems. Can we work on whatever features together? Um, Unless you've been vocal on the mailing list, it's hard for people to make those connections, which is why I'm glad that we do have things like, like ApacheCon and different conferences for the different projects. Um, we have great developer resources, um, <clears throat> but we just don't have that user success infrastructure, and that's, that's really what I would like to see us improve. Now, I was going to like talk about like how we could do this better, but I, I like to throw in a little story so it's a little more entertaining. And I gave this, I talk about this guy a lot because I think it's a great story of like open source guys versus the world. Does anybody here know who this guy is? Yeah, if you know and you've heard, saw me give the talk before, Sebastian, you just be quiet. So this guy was like the Elon Musk of the turn of the century. He was given 50 grand from the War Department and 20 grand from the Smithsonian for the special project, not unlike the government grants and loans that Elon got to start Tesla. He had a seat at Harvard. He's the head, at one point, the head of the Smithsonian. He's a professor at the US Naval Academy. He's also a professor at University of Pittsburgh, which is my alma mater. And there's a Langley Hall. So I actually knew who this dude was before I saw somebody else talk about him recently last couple years. Unfortunately, his hall was right between my dorm and the pub. And there were big, tall bushes there. So a lot of people would stop for a pit stop on their way home from the bars. So that's why Langley Hall was sort of famous in Pittsburgh. Um, New York Times used to cover this guy. Like everybody, he was a media darling. But his goal was to be rich and famous. He was a go-getter. He was like. He was actually more like Thomas Edison than Tesla, actually. He's, he's very money-driven. And he had every advantage. Anybody know what he did? Okay. You know what this, these guys did? These guys had no high school diplomas. They were bicycle repairmen. They self-funded their airplane development. No engine the maker in the world could make the engine for. Um, powered flight, so they made their own, and they accomplished the first manned flight in 1903. And when Samuel Pierpont Langley found out, he quit. I think that there's a good correlation. The guys who are really passionate about what they do were successful. The ones that had lots of money were not. So these guys figured out how to do powered flight. The other guy who had every advantage didn't. So the million dollar question is, and why I think it applies to us, is what if the Wright brothers had the same backing as Samuel Pierpont Langley? What if they had those resources? They had the money to make their projects successful. They had more engineers that they could put on solving the engine problem. Would they have been successful faster? Would they have been more successful? Would there not be Boeing and Airbus bus today? Would it be you know, Wright brothers Air? Make, making all the airlines today? I don't know. But it would be an interesting question. What if some of those resources could have been funneled away from, you know, money grubbing Samuel to, and I don't know Sam, he couldn't have been, he might not have been that bad, but um, to the Wright brothers. We're the Wright brothers. So I'm the guy with the t-shirts. I have a considerable amount of resources at my disposal and I want to help the ASF, but there is not a great way to do that. And what I want to work on is I don't want to commandeer the software development process. I don't want to buy influence. I want to figure out how we can make the projects that we want to invest in successful so it's good for the ASF, it's good for my company. And that's the question. These are the kind of things that there are people at Adobe, 
There's people at IBM. People at Oracle. There's people at Microsoft that want to help us do our job better. But we got to make it, we got to figure out how we can take the money and the resources they have and make it easy for them to interact with ASF projects. So this is the kind of stuff I do, and it's not always easy. I host events. So later this week, we're doing the CloudStack Collaboration Conference. I put forth six figures in money to make sure that's possible. Uh, I'm not telling you because I want thanks. I have a lot of resources that's going to make it possible for 350 people to come together and talk about my project. And that's, that's important to me. That's going to help our project. That's going to help our developers work together. It's going to give users a way to get some education. I do give away a lot of free t-shirts. I was trying to think on the plane yesterday. I would bet that in the last 10 years, I've been responsible for giving away over 100,000 t-shirts for the various organizations I support. Which, t-shirts are one thing, USB keys, but I'm building awareness for the projects I believe in. I can help, I can't write code, I can help make sure that people understand what we do and get the word out. I have people that work on social media and PR. Um, we used to, before Apache, make sure that our Twitter account grew every day, that our Facebook page got likes, that people understood that stuff. I think that's part of the awareness funnel. Um, it's not, and I, I think that some developers are really great at it, but I would rather see a guy who's really, or a gal writing great code than tweeting out the latest release when someone who has skills that are better served for that doing that. I provide <coughs> travel scholarships. So we have interns that work on Apache Cloud Stack. When they wanted to come to our development conference in Amsterdam last year, we made sure that they had resources to do that. It's not easy to do that through the ASF, so I have to figure out how, there is travel funding for like ApacheCon, but there's other events. I want to be able to send speakers to go speak at Interop when there's 500 people in a room wanting to know about big data or cloud or any of these things. I think we want to make sure that those people can get there, especially the smart people that don't work for a company that isn't doing it for their own self-interest. I can support interns. Um, I have um, some funding this year for an intern who uh, actually is probably one of our top 20 developers in the cloud stack. So this guy, Ian, is awesome and does a lot of great work. And we can help fund those things. But the construct within the ASF to do that, there is none. And maybe there should be, maybe there shouldn't be, but these are the kind of things that we should think about that these people like me can help you do. I also want to create goodwill. I want to create goodwill for our company within the project, but I also want to create goodwill for the project as well. So I want to make sure that when people go to a CloudStack event, that the beer is cold, the pizza's hot, and all these other things. I want to make sure that the people that can't make it there on their own accord can get there so they can interact with the other people so it's a good event. I want to make sure that when people see how the product is used, that they can say, wow, that's, that relates to me, so that they can adopt the product with some confidence. One of the things that we do is we talk to the people that are um, develop, um, <clears throat> using the software. We create case studies, put them on the wiki. I pay a lady to go interview the people in the community, send it out there, put it on the wiki so that you know that Spotify and TomTom Tom and Schubert Phyllis and a dozen other people are having good success with CloudStack. And I sponsor these events, which has been a mixed bag for me. Anybody go to ApacheCon last year? Okay. We recorded all those sessions. Anybody watch any of those sessions or point anybody to them afterwards? Really? I wanted to see Greg Stein's talk. Did anybody see Greg Stein's talk last year? He was asking how we were going to be successful for the next 20 years. It's a great talk. And you know what? Because we decided to um, create those videos ourselves and never converted them to the web, it's sitting on somebody's hard drive somewhere. Um, as someone who sponsors the events, I want to make sure that we are off, um, doing these things right and following through, because it's hard for me to justify spending money on it if we don't follow through all the way. So 
This is stuff I don't want to do. I don't want to develop and influence the development process other than by putting engineers on it and doing work. Uh, I don't want to manage the product, project. I don't want to buy influence. I don't want to prevent my competitors from participation. That's actually a pretty bad losing strategy in the long term. <clears throat> so, and the biggest thing I don't want to see happen is I don't want to see anything, any project or any part of the Apache Software Foundation fail. If I invest my time in it, I want it to be successful. If my company invests their funds in it, I want them to see it be successful. And that's, that's really, when we first started participating with ASF, I felt like we were always like looked at as a Trojan horse. Like, what's Citrix's real agenda here? They want to get inside, learn all our secrets, turn in all the developers into their automatons. Not our plan. So I like to end everything with sort of an asking. So if I wanted to, as a company, ask the members of the ASF to do something and the other participants, I really think that it's important that we get better training on the Apache way. We have a wiki, but I think to bring in developers from corporations that don't, whether they're a ISV or hardware manufacturer or even a private company, it's a very intimidating process. And I think that people uh, need a little training to get baked in that. If you're a C-sharp developer and you're used to like Microsoft.net communities and you go to the ASF, it's like you're going from the country to Harlem. It's like two different, like, gritty, gritty country to city, and it's totally different, and it's very intimidating. I'm sure the guys from Harlem going to where I grew up would probably be pretty intimidated by the horses and cows and rednecks toting guns around the back of their trucks. But um, I think we need to train people in the Apache way a little better. I think we definitely need better mechanisms for promotion of projects. I think we need to improve our infrastructure. There's a wait queue to, for the builds right now. I don't know where it's at recently, but it was many, many hours. If it was easy for me to direct funds to, to fix that, I could. But right now, I, I'm, I'm a whatever platinum supporter of Apache. So me and Facebook, Google, whatever. We write a check every year, and we just hope that it's administered well. But what's important to me is that if we want to develop software, that we can actually build software in a timely manner. Um, so I want to be able to direct funds to things I care about. So in that case, build process. Another thing is I want to put more money towards Apache Cloud Stack so it can be successful. And there's not a great way to do that. I have to demonstrate there is value to my company because they're not going to keep writing checks because I say so, because they like what I say. But I need to be able to say, if I sponsor this event, I can show a video of my logo on the keynote screen. And I can show that there was actual activity going there. And smart people were there talking about important things. I also think that we have to be careful about investing in new projects. It seems like we'll take any project, but I don't have the sense that there is the mechanism to make sure new projects are successful in the long term. And I think that. We've taken on a lot of projects recently. If these projects fail, it brings down all the other projects. Because they'll say, they'll point, people will point to ASF projects that fail and say, you know, it's not a bulletproof proven process. And I think it could be if we make sure that we're doing everything, like as I think of some of the examples, that all these projects are continuing to be successful. And we shouldn't take on something that we're not prepared to make sure gets out of incubation to a top level and has a long-term success. <clears throat> and that really comes down to not overextending precious resources. So, Sort of my takeaway from all of this, though, is there's not very many times in life that you get to work in an organization that has as far-reaching effect as ASF does. I mean, my mom sells paper. My dad sold cars. You know, in his lifetime, if he sold 10,000 cars and had 20,000 customers total, that's, that's cool. But we work on stuff that touches tens of millions, if not billions, of people when it comes down to, like, the web server and Hadoop and other things that are making things possible. You know, 
all the people that go to admins.com uses CloudStack. All the people that do big data lookups are using the Cassandra in some way, shape, or form. Not all, but you know what I'm saying. There's all these people, things. Every Java app on the web almost is using Tomcat to serve, serve up stuff. So we, we actually touch a lot of people. It's very, very cool. And when you have that opportunity, I don't think it's something you want to squander. So that's my sort of rant message for the day. I hope it was well received. Um, I'm MR Hinkle on Twitter, um, MR Hinkle everywhere. So if you have thoughts or flames or um, want to talk it over more, um, I'm pretty easy to find. So. Anybody else have anything they want to say or questions or tell me I'm full of crap? I'm game for all that. Daniel? I think I work with the Linux Foundation on Zen Project. And the thing I like about the Linux Foundation, so like in all honesty, when I came to Citrix, I felt like I was a little embarrassed to have to go to the place that Zen was at. Because I feel like Zen Hypervisor was hot in 2007 and sort of dwindled off. And so um, then I started getting involved with Zen. So I'm on the advisory board of Zen. Uh, now, and I, I see there's a huge install base, and it suffered very, very much by a couple of things. A, we didn't do a good job of accepting contributions. We're sort of jerks. Um, we didn't do a great job of promoting it, and the K, when KVM came on the scene, the people that worked on KVM, Red Hat, did a good job of promoting that in the Linux, Linux community. Um, so I think to your question of foundations that do it well, I think the Linux Foundation does it well and does it right. As far as promotion, though, the boy band of open source, the guys that took a bunch of talented people and made a big sensation as OpenStack. Like, I, I mean, these guys, they didn't have, it wasn't a user-led like Linux was or some of these other things. It, it's vendor-led. They had this sort of rough code from NASA and they got a lot of people together and got them mobilized. And they did a great job on the promotion of their project. And they put infrastructure around for, people, for companies to funnel, muns, f funnel, muns? funnel money to the things they care about. I think it's a little tough, too, though, because their organization allows you to buy a little influence based on the board seat, which is the same with Linux Foundation. Um, but they have the mechanism for the promotion of the projects. So they got all these engineers working on it. They almost have too many engineers, in, in my opinion, like people with competing views, so it makes it tough, but, and they don't have a ton of user support yet. They will, they'll be successful, but um, they've, they put all those, those processes in place to get that awareness, if you go back to my, power, my hyperbolic graph with awareness being at the top. That, that's, um, the, and I, I stole that boy band line from uh, the guy who does Open Daylight. He was, Neela, who's the director there, he's like, can you boy band open source? I think you can't, can. I don't know if you want to in every case, but from an awareness standpoint, put a lot of pretty people together, promote the hell out of it, you're gonna get adoption, or you're gonna get awareness, and hopefully adoption, and hopefully development feedback. So I think that's, and, and luckily Apache and uh, Lin, the Linux Foundation partnered on this event, because I think Linux Foundation is great at doing events. Apache doesn't have full-time employees to do that, and I hope this turns out well, because I was a big supporter to make this happen, because as a sponsor, because I think I do participate in Linux Foundation events. They understand how to do them that appeal to the developers of open source projects. Yeah? Shane can, can answer that. Yep. And as and he mentioned that, and Sally is awesome. So how many projects we have? 200? Like 140 plus how many incubating? 149 projects and 32 Okay. So that's basically 182 projects, 180 projects a year. And they have two releases a year. So Sally has to make sure that there's two, two releases made for that. That's 360 
releases a year. Just to do the releases is a full-time job because our content is not inconsequential. When I ran marketing for a software company, if I used a PR firm, they support, one person would support four companies at one time. She's supporting 180. So that is stretching those resources thin. Yep, maybe they should. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Sally Coderi, I think, is, or is, press, press at Apache is the, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to give this talk is I'm one guy, but if other people have the same concerns as I do, I think it's important because we want to represent the constituency, not just Mark Hinkle's. one of the reasons that I believe that they do that because they want to be able to direct resources to make sure that's like I want to like if I put in a hundred grand a year to sponsor ASF it gets diluted down and I'm happy to do that but if I want to put more in I want to make sure it goes to the stuff I care about and actually J clouds is one but maybe I don't care so much about Delta clouds so I don't care if if my direct funds go there or not so So I, I mean, my, my thing is, I, I have respect what they're doing, I respect what OpenStack's doing, but if I can find a way to do, get what they're getting out of the, the Cloud Foundry Foundation at OpenStack through the ASF, I would prefer to do that. Um, and that's, that's really um, my goal, is to be able to do that. And I think other people have that goal too. I also think it's tough when you have companies that are investing in a ASF project and they don't have a common way to collaborate. Like we make them collaborate on the code, but we don't make them collaborate on the marketing. And there are projects that have problems because of that. But if there was a construct for me to say, let's go promote the, you guys know who I'm talking about. Let's go promote the Hadoop brand without having eight different vendors out there caging it in different ways. I think A, combining all those resources in one would make Hadoop skyrocket even faster than it is, but it would also make it consistent. But right now, there's multiple companies, whether it's IBM or Hortonworks or Cloudera, that have to promote that brand, and there's not consistency as I see it as a consumer in the market because they have to do their own thing. So maybe, maybe there's an opportunity there for us to do it better. Yeah. So, yeah, if anybody wants to chat, I'll be around, but there's a talk coming in after this, and we don't want to hold them up. I paid for the conference t-shirts. <laughs>